Just because the Christmas season is in the rearview mirror doesn't mean you can't still give. In fact, the combined federal campaign continues until January 15th. Here with a summary of the most recent campaign, the chair of the CFC for the National Capital Region, Vince McCone. Vince, good to have you back. Tom, thank you very much. It's great to be here again. And how has the campaign gone this year? What were your goals and where are we at this point with still, you know, a week and a half to go? Well, we're in strong shape right now. Across the nation, $52 million has been raised by federal employees. Here in the D.C. area, in the DMV, we've raised over $26 million. That's half of the national total. And the last two weeks of the campaign are very important to us. They're actually $5 million weeks. Uh, by the 15th, we hope to get about $10 million more to support causes and charities in the region, around the country, and across the globe. Because federal employees will have had an average of 4 to 5% pay raise. I wonder if that'll help boost the giving in the 2024 period for the 23 campaign. Well, you know, I think uh, getting that gift from Uncle Sam means maybe we ought to give a little bit of a gift back to the community. You know, the average gift um, in the DMV from federal employees is just over $1,000 in CFC contributions, whether people give one time through payroll deduction um, or if they pledge volunteer hours. It's, It's a pretty significant amount that federal employees contribute annually. And what is the most common mode of giving? How do people normally give a payroll deduction of cash and they pick a charity or what's what's the mode here? The the most common way that federal employees give is through payroll deduction, where a little bit's taken out of every paycheck, whether it's um, biweekly or um, twice a month or, or monthly uh, pay. Um, and so folks may contribute 10, 15, 25, 100 dollars a pay period. They can pick one charity, multiple charities. Um, There's a lot of flexibility in the campaign, which is what makes it so popular. And maybe just review the roster of charities this year. Some of them come and go, but there's some eternals on that list. And it's a big list, isn't it? We have 5,000 charities right now in the campaign. And one thing er all the listeners should know is that every year, all of these charity partners are reviewed by federal employees to make sure that they're legitimate uh, 501c3 nonprofits, uh, that they um, have audits if required, and that they they follow good practices. So they're they're legitimate charities in the campaign. Are there any that stand out as popular among feds? You know, I haven't really seen what the numbers look like this year in terms of the breakout. That usually comes later. But I, I would say that typically a lot of charities that focus on immediate community needs, like providing housing for the unhoused, feeding programs, and programs that work with kids, tutoring, mentoring, um, are very, very popular. And of course, they're very local. Uh, They hit to home uh, in communities uh, in the DMV or around the nation where people live. People want to make a difference right in their neighborhoods. And what kind of backup? I mean, we've reviewed this before, but there's a standing staff and a lot of volunteers on the campaign itself because you do have a full-time job at the Labor Department. Combined Federal Campaign is driven by federal volunteers. It always has been. I started out as a key worker when I started my career at the Department of Justice in the early 90s, and I've been involved ever since then. We have a small staff that we work with, um, and OPM has a few staff members that run the programs nationally. And a lot of what our staff does uh, is help really drive the volunteer activities, those um, volunteers that are managing campaigns and their agencies on the national level, the events and activities that we have. We've seen a great uptick in those um, coming out of the pandemic. We're we're doing um, in-office and in-building programs again, and those have been great. In fact, we're doing a volunteer project tomorrow um, at uh, a local nonprofit with uh, members of our local federal coordinating committee, our board of directors, our campaign managers. Uh, we just want to make sure that we're on uh, the right footing as we go into the last couple of weeks and, and understand the impact of what we're doing and why we do it. We are speaking with Vince McCone. He is chairman of the Combined Federal Campaign for the National Capital Region. And why do you suppose it is that in the National Capital Region, which actually doesn't have the majority of federal employees, they're actually all over the country, there's about 300,000 in the DMV, if you will, that is the leader in giving, though, compared to some of the big federal centers around the country? Well, I think that really is a hat tip to the volunteers that work on the campaign. People feel very passionately, and they'll they'll, um, have the CFC be something that they do every fall, um, as their commitment to the community and, and an understanding of public services more than just what we do at the office. It's, it's an approach um, to how we impact our communities. So I think there's 
a great tradition uh, in the DMV that people are are engaged in this every year and look forward to it. And frankly, the CFC for many agencies is used as an opportunity to step from our day to day work and do some fun things. So there's also some engagement activities that are a part of that. And so when you put that combination of strong volunteer commitment and engagement of employees, I think you have an opportunity for us really to stand out. And so it's a real tradition. For those hearing this and decide, I want to give now at this point and haven't yet, what do they need to do, federal employees? Very easy. Go to givecfc.org on your phone, on your work computer. Um, If you have given before, you can go back into your account, re-up your last contribution. If you're new, you can go there, set up your account, or go to one of the app stores and get the um, CFC app and start your contribution. Now, we, we like cash. Um, nonprofits like the cash infusion that comes through the CFC because they're dollars that they can use at, to address needs throughout the entire year. But through the CFC, you can also commit to volunteer. And that's something I'm very excited about. So far, federal employees in our region have pledged almost 50,000 volunteer hours, which is holding steady from last year. And I noticed uh, last month there was a Washington Post article talking about how volunteerism uh, and contributions to nonprofits have been lagging nationally. And one thing I'm very excited about is they're not lagging here in the federal sector. Uh, and that, I think, really has to do with the leadership that our volunteers um, have about the importance of volunteering, getting out into the community, giving, either through the CFC or, frankly, any way that an employee wants to do. It's just important to have those commitments. And if you volunteer year-round for a place, say one of the food banks where they need sorting and boxing of food to send out to people and this kind of thing. It's a year-round need. Can the year-long volunteering count towards your CFC contribution each year? Yes. We actually um, monetize the volunteer hours as part of our contribution. So, so far, the volunteer hours that have been committed to date represent $1.2 million in contributions to charities locally. All right. And I'm curious, now that the government is as back to work as it's going to be, probably, with people in a few days a week, whatever. What have the trends been in the pandemic with respect to CFC levels of of collections? And is it on the rise now that people are somewhat back to work or what's going on there? I think I would characterize it as steady. I want to look at the numbers from this year's campaign because I think those will be very telling now that the pandemic is over uh, and uh, now that we are uh, in uh, a new hybrid work environment where people are in the office more, there's some teleworking. uh, I think we need to assess what things are going to look like um, based on this year's giving. But right now we're holding firm to where we were last year, which is encouraging. The we saw a huge increase in the number of in um, office events this year. And those were very exciting and, and very energizing. You know, look, we, we did a lot of the activities during the pandemic and they were fun. There were ways to connect um, during tough times, but there's nothing like having a cookie chill, like uh, a cookie, a, a chili or cookie cook off where you're with your um, colleagues and, and you can experience that together. It's just not the same when you share your recipe on a Zoom call. All right. So 10 more days or so to go. Make sure you get out there. And if you haven't, do that give. Vince McCone is chairman of the Combined Federal Campaign for the National Capital Region. As always, thanks so much. Thank you. We encourage everyone to give happy. Help us have a strong end to the campaign. And we'll post this interview at federalnewsnetwork.com slash Federal Drive, and we'll have a link to the CFC for you. Hear the Federal Drive on demand. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.